It's my pleasure now to introduce our general session speaker, Dr. Michelle Schreiber. She is Deputy Director for Quality and Value in the Center for Clinical Standards and Quality at CMS. And in this role, she leads CMS efforts around quality measurement, value-based incentive programs, and the work includes hospital stars, hospital value-based purchasing, interoperability, MIPS, and even post-care, post-acute care programs. She recently led the MIPS Value Pathways, uh, the modernization of the Hospital STARS program, and the development of Meaningful Measures 2.0, including the transition to digital quality measures. I should add that she's known at NCQA as a very strong partner as NCQA explores and expands into these topics. Michelle Schreiber, thank you for being here. The floor is yours. Thank you. First, let me check if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Very good. So thank you. It is a pleasure to join all of you today. It is particularly a pleasure to be here with NCQA because uh, we have established a strong partnership around quality measures and certainly around the path to uh, digital quality measures. I apologize that uh, Administrator Verma couldn't be here today, but she is uh, very, very busy, tied up at the White House in working on the country's behalf, really, in uh, many of the flexibilities and waivers that CMS has extended to try and um, help providers and patients in the COVID pandemic. Next slide. Thank you. So last year, um, actually, it feels like last year, it was just in February, as a matter of fact, but CMS at the CMS Quality Conference that we have annually, Administrator Verma actually outlined the quality measures program for um, the coming future. And it includes a commitment to enable a future where we get to fully digital measures. Hopefully within a decade, we all know that there's a lot of work to be done for that, however. It's a very ambitious goal, but we look forward to working on it in a stepwise fashion, actually, with all of you. Why do we want digital measures? And that is because we think it will significantly reduce the burden of measurement. We think it will promote rapid cycle feedback so that providers and patients can have information faster. We think it can leverage advanced analytics so that we can be examining data better and even doing predictive modeling with it. And that it will produce valid and reliable information for multiple uses. This announcement launched our Meaningful Measures 2.0 initiative, which we continue to develop. And we will be uh, releasing more information on that shortly. What was exciting at the CMS Quality Conference is that the stakeholder feedback for this and the stakeholder commitment actually towards digital uh, measures was actually very exciting and very positive. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. There we go. Thank you. CMS has been working towards developing a blueprint for advancing digital quality measures. We'd like to thank our contractor, Yale Corps. And we'd also like to thank NCQA, who has been vital to many of these conversations. But the blueprint will focus on multiple different approaches to getting towards digital measures. And I want to pause, but I'll repeat it again. The definition in our minds of digital measures are measures that can be submitted electronically. This includes electronic clinical quality measures or ECQMs, but it may also include claims measures. It may also include information about census information. And it may also in the future include information from downloadable devices. So our definition of digital measures is actually fairly broad. But this blueprint will focus on multiple uh, ways to advance digital quality measurement, including utilizing appropriate policy levers, and we do have some, advancing the quality of the data within measures, advancing the technology for measures, working towards quality data aggregation, and also that we can use information coming in in one portal, but spread it out into multiple places. And then finally, there's a lot of work that has been going on 
about alignment across agencies. Each of these actions demands a multi-pronged approach of engaging stakeholders, leveraging policy, and having evolving technical components. Thank you. Next slide, please. So let me speak for just a moment to the policy levers. All of you are very familiar with the interoperability and the um, patient access requirements as mandated by the CURES Act and the work that we have done over the years for meaningful use in promoting interoperability. This has really helped advance the use of electronic uh, medical records and the use of uh, electronic information sharing in uh, many ways. For the digital measures program, there is a strategic selection of measures for programs and development of incentives within programs to use digital communication. For example, there are incentives to um, using, to being able to download and transmit information or to reconcile information um, and many other incentives as well as, as penalties. All of you are uh, familiar with the information uh, blocking that we're trying to avoid. We also use uh, the consensus-based processes of NQF. Most of our measures we like to have endorsed through NQF, and we're doing more work with NQF around digital measures and ensuring that they have the expertise when it comes to examining digital quality measures as well. Finally, there is vendor certification as a lever. There is nothing right now, nor that I can uh, speak to in the future about a mandate and certification to use electronic quality measures. But at some point in time, this will be very important to ensure that everybody is using measures in a standardized way. Next slide, please. In terms of advancing our data quality, one of the challenges of quality measurement is to ensure that the data is actually good. You know, we've all heard the line garbage in and garbage out. We have to make sure that the data is valid, reliable, and that it's good. Hopefully we can leverage the US CDI to scale um, because that is a way that people have been coming together to focus very clear measures that have standards that have clear data elements and have agreed upon high quality data. Initially, we may focus on the core clinical data elements, lab results and vital signs. These are a subset of the US CDI and we've already identified and vetted the CCDE is important for quality measures and we're using them in voluntary reporting, such as in some of the uh, hybrid measures. We recognize that there is a lot of work that goes into mapping um, these um, tools and doing appropriate quality assurance from them. But once that is done, we can then strategically scale it and apply it rapidly across the entire USCDI. And as the USCDI expands, that will expand our opportunity to be using data in an electronic way. We've been uh, talking about what or not for new measures, for example, or for measures that are just being developed, if we should prioritize data that's in the CCDE because those are common elements and are um, widely used, there is just consideration um, for this. We're certainly not doing anything um, at the moment. So I don't wanna strike fear into people's hearts that that's all we're going to be using. Next slide, please. Thank you. It's important also to advance the technology. And I think most of us are coming to the consensus of using the FIRE-based APIs. So the Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources Standard makes system-wide inquiries possible. CMS is fully supportive of FIRE-based standards and has actually been leading the way for uh, developing and testing quality measures using FIRE APIs. So the FIRE tools for uh, measurement will also support uses such as clinical decision support and research applications. There are a number of FIRE accelerator projects that are ongoing that are aligning case use, public and private efforts some of the examples include Da Vinci or Codex, Gravity Project, and there are others um, that aren't even listed here. We have been working actually with the Da Vinci Project and working with payers and stakeholders, especially around prior authorization examples, but we've also tested some quality measures this way. And we're very excited about all of these initiatives that are ongoing in the country because we think it will grow to a, um, be able to support 
a large quality measurement digital enterprise. Next slide. We spoke, of course, about the burden reduction and benefits of uh, fire. Burden reduction is extremely important to Administrator Verma. We've had the Patients Over Paperwork Initiative. We've reduced actually by 20% our number of measures, and we've done a number of other burden reduction initiatives, such as uh, the initiative for documentation that has really, I think, improved things for providers. So in addition to reducing burden through fire, because it enables automatic data retrie retrieval from EHR and submissions of quality data through standards-based application. It does simplify data mapping. It improves the alignment between electronic clinical quality measures and clinical decision support, because of course we always want that to be seamless and it does promote interoperability. Next slide. Thank you. For several years, CMS has been working on an electronic uh, clinical quality measure strategy project. And again, this is a subset of digital quality measures, but for us, it's been very important because much clinical information obviously resides within the electronic medical record. This has been a multi-pronged approach with a strategy that includes alignment, such as aligning reporting requirements across CMS programs and care settings, aligning our specifications, our value sets and our data collection, providing value by clearly outlining data element definitions, development process. We have a collaborative measurement uh, development workspace, which I uh, have a slide on in a moment, and some data element uh, repositories that are standardized. Implementation and reporting processes. So again, clear specifications, submission of data elements with ECQMs through FHIR API. Um, the communication and outreach, we've done extensive work with helping to test ECQMs and with helping to develop them as well. So it is a multi-pronged strategy that in the long run will reduce burden, increase value, and we plan to do this with increased and constant stakeholder engagement. Next slide, please. So I spoke of the ECQM data element repository. We have a data element repository and a data element library. And it includes information on not only ECQMs used in CMS quality programs, but we have information that aids in data mapping activities and it centralizes information from the value set authority, from ECQM specifications, and from the quality data model. All of this is available on our website, CQI Resource Center. Next slide, please. Thank you. The measure collaboration workspace, also available here, hosted on the ECQI Resource Center, contains a set of interconnected resources, tools, and processes for ECQM that will promote transparency and better interaction across stakeholder communities interested in developing and implementing ECQMs for more harmonization and accurate and meaningful ECQMs. It includes everything from conceptualization to new ECQM's clinical workforce, clinical workflow, excuse me, the test results, and again, the data element uh, repositories and libraries. Next slide. Final information on the ECQI uh, Resource Center, you can see is available here. We also have information on FHIR Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources available on our website. As you know, it's open source HL7 standard for exchange. And there is information about all of these on our um, resource center. So we would encourage all of you to use it um, freely. Thank you. Next slide. Just to share with you the roadmap that we have been working with, and clearly we are not at a point where we have fully digital measures, but we like to think that we're at least on a journey to do so. We've talked about some of this already, starting with standards development with FHIR-based uh, standards, going to ECQM conversion, we're currently using FHIR R4, testing and pilot, so we have tested a number of uh, ECQMs already, working with the measuring authoring tool for fire development, and that still has some work to go, but I think is, is helping in terms of uh, authoring and testing as well. 
also with Bonnie and Cypress for the same. CMS is receiving system updates, so we are working to be able to receive ECQMs and Firebase standards and also looking on bulk receipt at the moment. And as in the end, the fire quality reporting is our goal as a centralized CMS quality submission solution um, that we hope to enact. Um, I can't give you a time frame because I'm not sure, but this is certainly what we're trying to uh, develop as we speak. Next slide. Some of the um, advances that we've had, we've participated in several connectathons, the last one being January, which seems like so long ago, but it really wasn't. But in January, we hosted actually a CMS HL7 Fire Connectathon. And we um, were part of a clinical reasoning track to demonstrate ways that we can reduce the burden of ECQMs through fire. It was very exciting because on site, we actually had um, innovators who were working on APIs that could take, for example, post-acute care data and put it already into apps that providers could quickly use to do functional status assessments. So it was very exciting to see that in pretty real time and very quickly, um, some of these measures could be done in a digital way. We are working on automated uh, scripts for updating the measure library when changes are made to SQL, which leads to reduced time for testing. And we also successfully tested um, at least four ECQMs um, for quality here. The fire pilot testing, we are partnered with vendors to test and identify future roadmap for fire use. So far, Cerner and Epic have volunteered to participate in testing. We appreciate that and we're working with other vendors as well. We need to be assessing the industry readiness and explore and evaluate the technical foundation for both receiving and calculating measured data. We think this is a way that CMS can help lead the path for EHR data exchange for quality. And we're really very excited about all of this work that is ongoing. Next slide, please. What's important is to be able to get the whole picture of patient data. And that's why we think patient uh, data and aggregation and appropriate attribution is so incredibly important. Many patients, as we know, receive care at more than one healthcare system. And we certainly know in the COVID pandemic that patients are sometimes going to remote testing sites or going to other facilities for either testing or care. And we need to be able to ensure that we get the most robust picture of where patients are getting their care and all of their care. And although we recognize that many EMR vendors have excellent systems within their own EMR and that can actually connect with other EMRs as well, it perhaps doesn't always capture that testing that may be done in a tent or that care that may be done in another facility. Um, and we need to ensure that we can do that to have a most robust picture. There was interesting work being done by David, uh, Dr. David Kendrick in Oklahoma with the Oklahoma HIE, which really showed how important it is to look at something like diabetic control if you just have what is in the one clinic that the patient may go to, that that really doesn't cover some other tests that may have um, been done elsewhere, and we need all of those to have the clearest picture of how a patient is really doing. So data aggregators, and we are um, open to many different types of data aggregators, but data aggregators may use multiple sources then to enable a robust patient-centered approach to data. Next slide. We know that there's uh, certainly work to be done. I don't think the current state is as limited as what it is here, but we know that there's opportunities for interoperability and for aggregation and um, questions around HIPAA restrictions and certainly issues around patient identification, all of which are being worked on so that we can get to this future state of patient-focused, patient-level data that we can apply risk adjustment to, that we can integrate data from multiple sources and that we can repurpose siloed data for very broad use, including things like national surveillance or cross-setting care coordination 
things that we haven't been able to do as easily in the past. So we're very excited about the work that's ongoing in the country around this and look forward to through digital measures being able to have much more robust pictures about how our patients are actually doing. Next slide, please. Meaningful Measures 2.0, which was launched at the uh, Quality Conference in February, introduced the Meaningful Measures 2.0 domains, which are similar to those in the past, a little bit different. They include the voice of the patient in using more patient-reported outcome measures. So we're very committed to increasing the number of patient-reported outcome measures that we use. The domain of patient safety with a broad view of what patient safety is chronic disease management, seamless communication through interoperability and really transitions of care, affordability and efficiency, wellness and prevention, and behavioral health and substance use disorders. So these are the key domains of Meaningful uh, Measures 2.0. We're going to continue to uh, reevaluate this and we'll be seeking a lot of public comment on this uh, in the next uh, few months. We want to be able to incorporate all care settings from outpatient to inpatient to ambulatory to home. And we ultimately would like to be able to incorporate all payers. Um, and that's something that CMS is working on the alignment, at least within CMS programs. Next slide. There are many stakeholders engaged in all of this, as many of you know, because many of you are uh, very important stakeholders. So not only government agencies such as CMS, but HRSA and the CDC and the FDA, technology developers, we've referred to some already, data aggregators, we've talked about that already, measure developers, uh, NCQA, um, the professional societies, many of whom sponsor registries and QCDRs, which we also think is an important way of being able to uh, work with digital data the consensus setting bodies. Patients clearly need to have a seat at the table so that we are meeting their needs and uh, addressing their concerns. Providers, both hospitals and professional societies, payers, not just CMS, but others. And so there are many, many stakeholders that need to come to the table to participate in these conversations. And of course, we work closely with ONC in promoting um, their not only rules, but their uh, processes and uh, try to work lockstep with them on these initiatives. Next slide, please. Some current alignment activities across stakeholders that uh, many of you have hopefully seen is first, of course, alignment within CMS across our centers of the Center for Clinical Standards and Quality and Medicaid in the marketplace programs and the innovation model programs alignment across the federal government. We have been working um, with the VA um, to align there as well. And I think there's a very exciting opportunity that the VA has, is they're launching their electronic medical record model to build in electronic quality measures. Alignment through consensus that we spoke of before through NQF and other bodies helping to provide consensus. They're excited about the work that we have been doing through uh, NQF and AHIP, America's Health Insurance Plan, as well as CMS, the three partnered towards developing the Core Quality Measures Collaborative to align a core set of ambulatory measures that we have agreed that all payers or at least all participants in this uh, collaborative will actually align to so that we can prevent the one-off programs. We've been having a lot of conversations about digital measures and how those can be advanced forward. And then finally, we know that some measure developers are already converting their measures to uh, digital measures such as NCQA and others. And we certainly are very appreciative of that work. Next slide. So in summary, we are looking towards a sort of quality measurement ecosystem where quality measure is fully based on digital measures to reduce the burden of reporting, to be able to provide many dimensions of feedback in a timely fashion, rapid feedback so that it's almost point of care when somebody needs it, transparent reporting and reporting that is not as retrospective but is much more timely 
so that patients can be making appropriate decisions about their healthcare. And that we use this to leverage advanced analytics to define, measure, and even do predictive modeling around key quality issues. So how do we know that we're getting better? That is, we will be able to study it. That kind of rapid cycle feedback, that kind of leveraging analytics, the transparency that is needed and the burden reduction really can only be accomplished with a quality measures paradigm that is a digital law of measures combined with interoperability so that information can be uh, shared and used when it's needed and where it's needed. And we're really very excited about the transformation that we are all beginning our journey on and in the midst of to get to that pathway towards the future. So with that, I will um, end my slides and I thank you all for participating in this great online digital summit program hosted by NCQA. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. We have time for about 10 minutes of Q&A. We invite the audience to submit your questions. I will read them aloud for Michelle. Michelle, we, uh, some people have already gotten in on that act. And uh, first question is, uh, CMS has an ambitious agenda. How separable are different parts of the agenda? Might you advance on some fronts, but not others? Or is this an all at once, all or nothing activity? So how separable are the different components that you've shared with us? Yeah, I think that they're all interconnected, but I do think that they're separable. And I also think that they will probably pursue different timeframes. So even though we're working on one segment and it may be proceeding at a more accelerated pace, another segment, which may be important, may not have such an accelerated pace. So clearly all of these um, can be segmented and they're not all necessarily going to they're certainly not all going to happen at once. This is going to be incremental and it's going to be start and stop to some degree, but it's also going to be, I think we need this holistic picture at least so that we have the goals in mind. Which parts of the agenda do you worry the most about and which are you most optimistic about? <laughs> well, I tell you what I'm most optimistic about and that's stakeholder engagement because people are really very excited about this and they're very excited about this possibility and kind of the new world of how we can do measures, how we can reduce burden, how we can make this more transparent. So I'm most excited and least worried, hopefully, about stakeholder engagement. Although we all know bringing consensus to big groups like that is, uh, is always um, interesting, but people are very engaged around it. I think that the technology is probably there so I'm somewhat less worried about the technology because I think it actually is there. I'm very worried about the work it actually takes to do the mapping, to do the QA, to slog through the workflow, to link it the way it needs to be done because that's real work. It's time consuming work. And, and, I, and, and I'd say if I were worried about anything, we need to allow um, certainly enough time for that real work to happen. Many people are interested in telehealth these days. What are your thoughts on telehealth, particularly in the context of the pandemic? CMS obviously unleashed a number of flexibilities which really allowed telehealth to be um, rapidly implemented. It has been very exciting actually to watch where some clinics have gone from zero telehealth to 50, 60, 70% of their visits being telehealth. The numbers of telehealth visits have absolutely exploded. And actually that's been very exciting. I think all of us agree that the genie is not gonna go back in the bottle on this, that we have probably moved ahead by a decade in advancing healthcare by um, these different models of care and these flexibilities. What I can't tell you and what I can't I, I literally don't know, and, and I think that, you know, decisions are still being made with a lot of stakeholder input is exactly which of these flexibilities remain, which are the right ones, what is the right way to use this, what are the things that we should be doing and promoting and all, and all supporting, and what really does have to 
sort of go back to more traditional ways of care. But I think that we have done light years of advancement in care and the genie is not going back in the bottle, which will be very, very exciting. In terms of right now, quality measures, we need to make sure that all of our quality measures are actually incorporating telehealth visits. And so that we have gone in and actually done an inventory of all of our currently used quality measures to ensure that we have telehealth visits that can be counted there. In outcomes measures, it's probably a bit less important because you're just looking at the outcome. But in process measures, we have to make sure that we're defining very clearly where our sources of data are coming from. I suppose that's true in all. And so we need to ensure that we are using telehealth in the current quality measures. Going forward, I think it's going to present uh, not only challenges, but opportunity. What does it mean to see a patient via telehealth? Are we going to be doing more digital monitoring, home blood pressure monitoring, home glucometer downloads? And how do we use that data then in quality measures? And I don't think any of that is mapped out. I think that's sort of the future, but I think that all of that are questions that are very important and that we will be looking at and studying. Um, but I think telehealth has just been so exciting. In addition to being wonderful for both patients and um, providers in that we could have separation and do things vi virtually so that there was much less risk of transmission. So this has been a very key safety feature as well. And we're very excited about it. If you were asked, do you have concerns about the 10 year timeline due to COVID and providers focusing on getting back on their feet as opposed to moving to a digital platform? Can they really do both? Meet the 10 year deadline and still get back on their feet? You know, I don't think any of us can predict the future quite honestly and it's an aggressive timeline and hopefully we will get there. Um, I think there'll be technology advancements, frankly, that maybe we don't even know about that will help us get there. The thing is, we really need to move in that direction. I will tell you one of the things that the COVID pandemic has highlighted is how much data we have to be able to have in fairly real time that we don't. And if we had that, we would have been able to advance our data collection, maybe be able to look at predictions and trending even better than what we've been able to do. I saw a wonderful presentation of a number of HIEs who have done terrific work with uh, getting testing data and can break it down to really a very small region, like a county level, that is so exciting. So that kind of interoperable data that all of us want to be able to work with to be making real-time decisions, I think is hugely important. And so I wouldn't want to back off from that 10 year time, time frame because of how important this is. But I think all of us are really going to have to um, think through what the work is that has to be done and what's realistic. And, you know, um, I think there's going to be a balance. Of the initiatives that you have talked about today, which align most closely with the MIPS value pathways? I think any of these do, quite honestly. So the MIPS value-based based pathways, as, as you know, and I'm sure many on the call know, is really a way to transform MIPS so that it is more coherent, has more meaning to specialties, for example, has smaller numbers of measures that are aligned with each other. So right now, you can choose quality measures and improvement activities that are, have nothing to do with each other. Those have nothing to do necessarily with promoting interoperability. And the cost measures, unless you've got an episode-based cost, may not align as well. So the MIPS value pathways are really all about having aligned measures. So for example, if you want to look at diabetic control, your quality may be glycated hemoglobin control, and your improvement activity may be um, being able to download that glucometer or offering diabetic education and your promoting interoperability will be the, the patient's av availability to get that data and your cost then data would hopefully eventually be some episode-based cost so that these are aligned. 
They're being co-developed with the specialty societies so that they really have input as to what are the most meaningful measures for them. And I think all of this actually goes very well with the digital platform. Many specialty societies are using QCDRs or other registries, and many of them are digital. I think the move towards digital measures will go along with the development of MIPS value pathways. And we actually see them being able to be completely complementary. Which measures are the primary target for conversion into digital quality measures, into the digital format that is? Uh, will you focus more on existing ECQM measures or focus more on paper-based measures? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I can actually answer that. And I think the focus of measures is really going to be determined based on consensus-based, what are the most important areas that we want to measure? So for example, and I'll just pick on an example, substance abuse. We all know how important substance abuse is. So looking at measures, what are the right measures for substance abuse and how do we then get them so that they can be digital? So I think it's more a question of what are the most important strategic priorities versus which, which method do we start with and try and convert? I think it's what, what are we really trying to improve and how can we align with that? I think we have time for one more question and that is what would you like people who are watching today to do or not do to help all of this come true? Well, obviously we would like them to continue to promote interoperability in their work. We would like them to, um, for those who, who may be in health systems, to really be looking at aligning their workflow with how their data flows, with how their quality measures can flow, because we think that that's very important, that loop of how you do your care, which is workflow, to how you collect your data, to how you then report your data, and then of course, how you build in clinical decision support and how you can make that transparent and engage people in that conversation. So I think the more that we can do that, the more we can have these conversations, the more that we can understand these programs, the more we can participate with our vendors. Um, it continues to create this ecosystem where people want to move towards digital measures and are actually seeking to do it even faster because they realize the benefits of uh, all of this being digital. So I would just say support the work that you can, get engaged, get involved, think of your workflow, and uh, participate in things like the NCQA Digital Quality Summit, because it's very exciting where you can network and learn from others. Well, Michelle Schreiber, Deputy Director for Quality and Value at the Center for Clinical Standards and Quality and CMS, Thank you for being part of the Digital Quality Summit. We appreciate your being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to partner with you. So thank you so much. Michael, take it away. Thank you, Andy. That was a great session. Thank you, Michelle.